Yes, so uh, hello, hello. And I'm here with Rubiel. And hello. hi, Rubiel. Hi, and Ramsey. <laughs> Mandy, that's a great question. It's even, even harder. Okay. <laughs> doorbell. Oh, no doorbell. <laughs> Sorry. So uh, I'm back again. <laughs> the package is in the house. Uh, yes, my IKEA. Um, I waited for a month and now it's here. Um, yay! <laughs> Am I too dark here? I feel like it's too dark. Um, I don't know. We, oh. we, 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 no, I mean, you're looking good and your answers are great, so... Uh, That's what matters. <laughs> that's, all we need. that's all we need. Okay. Uh, um, just cur out of curiosity, I mean, I know it, but how did you start it? How did you start it? Wow, that's a great story to tell. <laughs> um, I started as a model. I was model. I was a model when I was 16, 17, 18, until my 20th birthday. I'm still too young. But um, yeah, I started as a model. I experienced what modeling was. I experienced the main market. Um, I was with big agencies in New York and Milan and Paris. Um, so basically I experienced that as a model, but I was curious about what the agents do. You know, whenever you are a model, you go basically to an agency and you see 20 people sitting on a, on a table and you were, I was curious, I was like, Okay, they're in front of the computer. What do they do all day? Obviously, sending me jobs and stuff like that. But I wanted to be and to learn uh, more from the industry. So I decided to basically do an internship as a, I started as an intern, like, you know, bringing coffee to my boss and all that. Um, and then they hired me. They saw that I was really passionate about what I did. I was really curious. I was in models.com reading every day, every news that they post, um, following models, following brands and all that, and the fashion shows, of course. So that they gave me the opportunity to start as a junior booker, and then I, I worked my, my way up, basically. Yes. Until I found, until I, I opened my, my own mother agency. Yeah, and, and so even the girls who are in different countries can contact you? Yes, absolutely. We do mostly online scouting right now. Um, yeah. And always, we are always doing online scouting, uh, trying to get as many models as we can, obviously, that they have the right, um, the right potential that we look for. And most of them are usually, we have a lot of models from the Netherlands. We have Dutchies, a lot of Dutchies, Dutchies like here. Yeah, there's still <laughs> Dutchies, yeah. So yes, we always welcome all the models from all over the world. Yes, oh, that's so, so nice. And for people um, hey, who doesn't maybe know what a mother agency is, what, what is a mother agency? Okay, uh, mother agency is basically the ones uh, that are, as I explained it to people, there are two type of agencies basically. So there are the standard agencies and the mother agencies. Those standard agencies are the ones who provide the jobs for you as a model and they work through clients. They basically send you everything for you to work. Mother agencies are the ones that scout, uh, develop, basically put all the time and focus on the career of the model at the beginning um, to basically groom groom them all and until they're ready so we go through haircuts we go through change of the image we go through building a portfolio we go through how telling you how to walk you know so all this stuff working working with the models from the very beginning until they're ready to show to the clients that's yeah. what mother agencies do yeah and how do they know because, uh, yeah, or, or how do they know what is a good a mother agency? Uh, I think the best thing to realize whenever you meet either a mother agency or any agency is the connection that you have with the person that talks to you at the agency, meaning the agents. So if you feel connected with them in every possible way, like, you know, from whatever the, the stories they tell you, whatever the stories you have to tell, there has to be a connection. Not only that, but also the plan that every agency has for you. So 
by you telling like, oh, this agency like, likes this about me and I feel like I like this about them. Mm -hmm. That is when we start building relationships. And for me, relationships are the most important things in the industry. And not only in the industry, you know, as a person too. So uh, I can say that you can judge somehow if it's a good mother agency or not by the time and the, and the plan that they have for you. It's all about that. It's all about that connection and interest from agents to you and you to them. So if you feel connected, if you feel like they're the right for you, why not to do it? Even if they're small agencies, you know, most of the small agencies, they really care about you. And that's what matters whenever you are trying to become a model. Yeah, no, for sure. And uh, yeah, and it's, uh, it, you will have a lot of connection with them and you don't want to just do this for a couple of months. Right. Um, well, talking about that, so you probably have a lot of models coming to you who might already are still in school. How, what kind of advice would you give them or how would you handle that? Actually, we have a lot of models that are, and one of them that is still very young in high school. So my best advice is models should always be educating themselves, yeah. not only in the industry on what's happening in the modeling industry and the fashion industry, but also the education is something that really important, something really important for their careers. And obviously as a person. So. For me to tell a model, because you are in ninth grade of a school, you have to stop modeling. I mean, you have to stop school to go to model. I will say, don't do it, you know, have your time whenever the things, everything is together, whenever you um, go through school, educate yourself, you will be ready for what's out there for you. So models that are in school, there are many choices right now. One of them is to do school online. That's yeah. a great thing that we can do. So while models travel all over the world, they can do school and that's a benefit for their careers and also for, for their education. So that's something very flexible to work on. However, some, some schools, they do not allow it. And when they don't allow it, well, you don't have a choice, right? So, but it's always for everyone to stay educated all the time. Yes, yes, good. And, um, and also I get a lot of questions about, yeah, but I live in a small town. Um, can I even start? What would you say to them? Uh, we are actually one of the ones, one of the agencies that would love to bring people from the smallest towns <laughs> because everybody goes to the main cities. Everybody goes to find models in, I don't know, in Chicago, everybody goes to find models in LA, or if you are in, in, in the Netherlands, you go to Amsterdam because it's the main city. No, we want to find the models that are in a farm, that maybe they come from a, a poor family and they don't have many resources and we want to help you, you know? So that's one of our goals in Kara's model management is to bring models from all over the world uh, disregard of where you come from or if you're from a small city or town uh, mm -hmm. yeah we don't care about that we mostly care about the model the person yeah that's good and um, but do you also see a lot of difference in industries uh, in terms of um, play or places like how is New York different from LA uh, from Miami or even Europe um, that's a good question. I mean, there is a lot of difference starting from, from the environment, you know, we start from the environment. If you say New York, New York is a very busy, busy city and you see a lot of people all over all the time. Yeah. It doesn't stop. So whenever you go to LA, you see a lot of cars, you know, it's, you see obviously people on the street, but not as many as New York. So we have to basically see all that. Now, when it comes to what's the difference in between markets, it's a good question. Why? Because in New York City, whenever a model should be in New York trying to work is whenever they have gone through secondary markets, meaning you have gotten the experience that you need, you have the photos that you need, um, you have uh, met with you know casting directors, but a small casting directors, um, 
and you have done all this. So whenever you come to New York, it's because that is a main market and one of the biggest markets. Mm -hmm. uh, it's because you're ready to see Ashley or it's because you're ready to see Pierre Giorgio, those two big casting directors. So it's important the process that you take in the development process uh, in order for you to have a successful career. Now, when it comes to Europe, uh, for example, in Paris, things are a little bit more busy with clients, especially for fashion weeks. There are a lot of clients from Paris, I guess, most of the shows that happen during fashion week are in Paris. So it's, uh, I would say, you know, it's a big difference in markets. LA is more, it's mostly a commercial market, while New York is more high fashion. However, there is a lot of commercial that you can do in New York as well, and it can be booked through New York. So mm -hmm. we have to see many facts for that. Yeah. yeah. It's all that. Uh, well, talking about scouting and getting scouted, um, how do you get scouted? What is the best advice that you will give to somebody who's looking at this interview and thinking, actually, I want to start as a model, but how? Yeah. So uh, the best way to get scouted, if you are a teenager, for example, and you want you are on social media all the time is basically to reach out to agencies you know, yeah. on social media you have to understand that behind every agency instagram there is a person mm -hmm. there is a human being there is no robot answering or not answer there is a human being so uh, we start we have to start from there don't be afraid to send your photos to your agent to those agencies or don't be afraid to tag those agencies. Don't be afraid to mention those agencies. Don't be afraid to do so if you want to be discovered. Now, the other way to get discovered is for us, we do it all the time. Basically, we go through locations, we go through hashtags, we go through the friends in common that you have, we go through the, the photos that you were tagging, with so many ways that we have to, uh, to do scouting online, basically on Instagram. Yeah. But also, uh, if you go, for example, to our agency on the website of our agency, carasmanagement.com, you will see the submission tab where you can follow what, what it says. Basically, you will need the Polaroids or digitals. And those photos are just regular photos taken with this a phone. You don't need a professional camera to do so. You yeah. don't need a professional photographer. All you need is your phone and someone to take them. Or if you have a tripod, do it with your tripod. And if you don't have a tripod, just put it in standing on, I don't know, your window or something. Yeah. So we need those photos. What do we need? We need a uh, face close up. That's the first one, right? Face close up. Okay. We need full body, right? Okay. We need hot body and we need profiles. That's all we need. Okay, so both sides. Yes, both sides. Most important, no makeup, no editing, no Photoshop, no absolutely any filter that you can possibly imagine. Okay, also not the green eyes. I really like to have green eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and can I smile? Yes, you can smile. You can smile, but not all the photos. Okay. No. okay. Because the smiling is, is cute whenever we judge basically or try to know your personality. Yeah. You know? yeah. Uh, also, well, that's a process that we're going to talk about later. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, but that's a good answer. And I think a good start because, yeah, that's, that's just the start. But, oh, yeah, and how long, because I can imagine uh, that you will get a lot of submissions, how long does it take for you to get back to someone? And do you always get back to people? We don't always get back to people due to the amount of submissions that we have, okay? Yeah. Even uh, though we are a small mother agency, we get a lot of people messaging through Instagram, messaging, sending emails, but we go through all the submissions. We don't respond to all the submissions, but we go through every single of them, every single yeah. each one of them. Um, whenever we find someone that is interested, we get back to them right away, you know? Yeah. Uh, so some agencies, they probably are too busy to reply right away. So that's something that you have to consider and be a little patient, yeah. but we try to do it right away. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. good. But, but also don't panic if they don't, uh, if you're not. Uh, exactly. That's a good thing, yeah. you know. Um, 
whenever we don't answer to the people that are sending us email, there is a reason. But the main, uh, the, my best advice that I can give to you and to them, people that are watching us, is to don't take it personal. So yeah. we do not reply because there are so many reasons there. It could be, I don't know, it could be that we are not looking for, for that type of faces right now because the trend is, for example, Asian faces in this season. It could be that you are still too young. It could be that, you know, there's so many facts. Yeah. So don't take it personal. Just keep pushing, keep trying different agencies and you will get a response one day. Yeah. And would then, because now you're saying maybe for this season, you're looking for this and for that season for that. Would you recommend them maybe that they can retry to submit? Yes, I do recommend to retry, but at least whenever you send a submission, I recommend to do it after three or six months to see what has changed. Yeah. Not only what has changed for them physically, no. but also in the industry. Yeah. So it's always to know to have a balance in between those two. Yeah, for sure. Good. And um, let me think. <laughs> There's so many questions I have. For sure. <laughs> uh, uh, well, about, um, I can also get a lot of questions about divisions. Like, how do you know that if you are a high fashion model or commercial, or do you look at a submission like that? Or is it more like, hey, what, what, what can you say about that? Um, as you know, the industry right now is very inclusive, you know, mm -hmm. so we, we see models plus size, we see models, curvy models, we see more commercial, petite, there are so many divisions for yeah. modeling that you can do. Either if you were five, five or five foot, you know, there are, especially on TV for those are great, but there are so many divisions that anyone can apply to. Now, when we take a look at those submissions, what we do is basically, whenever we see a model, a submission of a model, we basically put a brand on their face right away. So she can be, for example, Louis Vuitton. She can be great for Miu Miu. She can be great for, or we put a casting director face. Oh my God, Ashley will love this girl. Yeah. You know, so. Voice, right? What's that? You also uh, scout boys, right? Yes, we do scout boys as well. So. Base, that, is, that is a fun process because it's not about judgment, it's about opportunity. Yeah. So whenever we see the submission, where can we imagine this person, this guy or girl modeling, doing, I don't know, a campaign, doing a e-commerce job, doing a photo shoot, doing anything. Mm -hmm. So it's a little complex yeah. to have a single definition for that. Did you ever have a model that you thought like, um, oh maybe she would do this or or and, and then surprisingly she did that and that as well or did yes, yeah. definitely i mean i just called uh morgan and morgan is one of our models that probably has more is more a little bit more advanced in mm -hmm. other other models um that we have that we represent and i mean I, i'm not sure if i can tell you this but <laughs> I, <laughs> since the first moment i saw her it was like wow she's such a product girl you know, yeah. like yeah. I know probably Ashley will love her. And it's not only about her beauty, it's also about her personality. She transmits something that is unique. Mm -hmm. And she's silly. She's, she's also very young. She's only uh, 18 years old. She's yeah. just 18. And then when you meet her, if you are an older person, she can basically be in a conversation with you for hours. Yeah. Hours, hours. So it's all about those little details that really matter, you know? That's and true. Yeah. That's true. What do you, or what is the best thing about your job? My best thing about my job? Yeah. Oh, that's a great question. I think learning from each person that we represent. I take the time to not only learn from the models, but also to learn from the parents. Mm -hmm. because it's, it's so good and passionate to see the process that they go through when you find them and the person that they become a couple months later or years later. Yeah. It's so interesting. So I learned everyone has a different story, either yeah. if they like animals or if they're passionate about art or even funny stories, what happened on the daily life. 
So I learned so much from them. And that's, I would say, is the best, um, the best thing from my job that I love the most. Yeah. And the uh, um, most proud moments? The most proud? Yeah. The most proud moments. Uh, obviously, you know, whenever they book a, a campaign or, or something like that, that makes me super, super happy. But I would say the most proud moment is whenever we fly them out of their town yeah. or for the first time, because it's something that they have dreamed for a long time. Whenever they have him, for example, I have a model, his name is Adrian. He was never on a plane. He comes from a small town in Colombia. And for the first time after he scouted in December, three months later, he was in Paris and Milan. So he was like, this is so fast that I never had, I never thought this will happen to me. Yeah. So those are my, pro my proudest moments, I would say. Whenever I see their happiness on their faces and their families. Yeah, that is so, yeah, I know, that's so cool. And, um, well, think about that, it, it can also change a lot and very fast. What kind of advice would you give them to handle that? On the change? I'm sorry, can, can you repeat sorry, the question? I, I'm just saying, like, with the, um, um, yeah, like, because traveling, it's sometimes very lonely for models because and suddenly they come into this industry, you travel a lot, and, um, yeah, or, or even you're, well, there's so many things, actually, because also there's yeah. you know, the, 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 the thing that sometimes you just don't know what's going to happen next week. Right. And, um, yeah, do you have any advice for that? I mean, uh, it is definitely uncertain for a model going to a new city, especially if it's one of the main markets that are such huge cities. Um, so we have to go through, obviously, the process of development, and that's why model agencies are here for, is to advise them on where are they going, how to, you know, how to manage those situations, learning the city, learning where you're going, learning who you're going to see, all that it could be very overwhelming especially yeah. if it's the first time so i would say the best advice that i can give whenever you are new in a city or a big market or if it's your first time in fashion week is to listen to your agents because they will give the best advice to you in order for you to to not let anything happen to you so listen to your agents get that guidance um, be open for whatever it comes, you probably, if you are in a main market, you will have in one day, 15 castings, and you will not have time to use your phone or to talk to your parents. So you have to be prepared for all this, but it's all about confidence and it's all about uh, what you are capable to do. So don't give up. It could be hard, but you have to do it. Yeah. And of course you make sure they are ready for that. Yes. So. That's so true. And uh, yes, the big question. What are you looking for in a model? Wow, okay. <laughs> uh, personality, that's the first one. Okay, whenever we are looking for a model, for let's say on Instagram, right? Mm -hmm. We look a model, we scout someone new. But we go through their photos and their photos are with friends, their photos are with family, the things that they like, the things that they're passionate about, you know, they want to share or contribute something to the world with it. We love that. And mm -hmm. we can see that you have a personality for every basically topic in life. And that's what we want. We want someone that is outgoing, you know, that is down to earth, that they can have a conversation. Even if they're super young, you know, what's unique for you? Like, what do you have that is, that makes you stand for others, mm -hmm. you know? So one of our youngest models, for example, she's only 13 years old and she basically is teaching other kids, kids ballet, like how to dance Yeah. at 13. So she has a classroom Yeah. And she's only 13 years old. So yeah. that's something incredible, you know? So mostly we look for that. We look for personality. That is something that it's going to take you far in the industry mm -hmm. and the rest, the beauty comes after. So 
if you were tall, how tall are you? Obviously, height, depending on the division that you apply to, will matter. If you're for high fashion, obviously, there are standards and requirements. Um, and then we look for basically that you're cool. Are you a cool girl or a cool, or a cool boy? You know? Okay. Okay. Just be cool. Yes. Just be cool. <laughs> <laughs> True. And cool is by being yourself, of course. That's and right. Being cool. yourself. Like, oh. Um, and, well, what if you are under that height? Um, like, if you are five, six, can you even start? Yes, of course. I mean, depending on what, what age you are. You know, there are not age requirements uh, to start modeling. I was recently reading some model that is started in Paris at 60 years old. She was walking a show by on 60 years old. I was impressed. So right now, again, the industry is very inclusive and there are not requirements for age. So whenever you are, I don't know, whatever years old, you can still try. Now, if you are five, six, my suggestion for you is basically Go for a mother agency because they will give you the best guidance in what direction to take, obviously. But then uh, try to see and be open for the opportunities that could happen to you. Meaning you are a little shorter for high fashion. Sometimes, and right now we see a lot of short models in the wrong way for high fashion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This has been happening for a lot, a lot of time already, yeah. which is great, you yeah. know? Yeah. Just more opportunity to others yeah. so we never know that could be a possibility but also know that there are standards for these specific divisions so do what you can do basically in the industry if you apply for petite or commercial you can do a lot if you're a short model yeah. so you have to keep in mind that yeah no for sure and how about uh, contracts what do they have to be aware of Contracts. Uh, that's great. That's a great question. So thank you for asking that. <laughs> uh, contracts. You have to be aware of so many things. You know, yeah. first of all, the you know how long is your contract for? Uh, that's something. Usually, agencies have contracts from three years, two years. Some markets they manage one year contract. Mm -hmm. uh, also, you have to take in, in advance, like to think about the percentage, pay attention to the percentage that agencies uh, will take from the jobs that they provide to you. Some markets, it is normal that they have, for example, the UK has 37.5 that they, the agency takes from you. Other markets in Asia, they take 40%, but it's because of the amount of job that they will give you. Mm -hmm. So you have to, every market is different for a percentage. And you have to know the regulations of the contract that you will be working on. Yeah. So if yeah. that's legal, because I have seen many contracts that they're not legal and they are like over the top what they ask, even in London. And that was crazy when I saw that. So uh, yes, you have to be careful with everything. Try to read everything. Try to have it a lawyer reading. Um, and find advice, you know, find advice from you as a coach. That you have many connections or from agencies true and yes um and how about a portfolio what is needed what is needed in a portfolio that's a great question okay we have to start by knowing what direction is your agency going to take with you so if your direction is more commercial well you need photos as a commercial model if your direction is more of high fashion you need more high fashion models more high fashion for us. So it's a, the, the first thing to know again is to know the plan of your agency. But once you know this, if you are a fashion model, for example, it's always good to have, you know, obviously a couple portraits, um, also different styling, as many styling as you can. Always is good to shoot with different photographers, but be careful with who you shoot with all the time, especially because right now, Many photographers approach to all the models on Instagram saying, oh, I want to work with you and it's for free. But they don't also know, the models don't know what that usage of those photos will be from the photographer. Yeah. So you will get the photos, but you don't know what the photographer is going to post those photos. 
yeah. I had before I had a couple of cases where some models they saw their photos in Bangladesh on a billboard. No. Yes. On a billboard. So what <laughs> happens then? Like exactly, you have to be careful with those photos will be because the photographer can easily sell those photos for you know other countries and yeah. different clients. Yeah. And it's not fair for you. It's not fair for you. So yeah, you have to be careful with that. But also, uh, if it's more, you know, you also basically need a little bit of movement. No, actually a lot of movement in the photos. Don't be afraid to move and set. Don't be afraid to be yourself, you know. Show the things that you are capable of and transmit that in your photos, in your portfolio. Yeah, for sure. Now, one of the other things, if you are a new model, I'm sorry, Mindy. Um, no, 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 actually, I uh, want to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things that you are, if you are a new model, sometimes a new model don't need 20 photos on their portfolio. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you see on agencies that they only have on their website, they only have six photos. But those six photos show and sells what it needs to be sell. Yeah. So it's all about the quality of the photos. It's also about um, who shoot the photos. That's something that really matters today. And also the best way that you can possibly show yourself all natural. Mm -hmm. Most of the great photos are natural and yeah. that's what they want to see. Yeah, they want to see you. Yes you <laughs> it was you and um but but for models who are actually they they just starting or they're not signed yet how important is a portfolio uh great question we get that a lot mm -hmm. you don't need any professional photos you don't need a portfolio to get started nothing at all you just need your polaroids that's it four or five photos of yourself with your phone that's all you need yeah. So don't, don't spend money on, yes, exactly. Don't spend money on paying professional photographers because that's going to cost you a lot of money and you don't need that. So yeah. don't, you know, all you need is again, this thing. Yeah. Make it happen. Just a clean background, not a lot of makeup. Yeah. Clean background. Yeah. Good. Good. And um, yeah, I think now I have all the questions I needed. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think, yeah, it, are there more? Well, with maybe even for commercials, commercial um, division, you also need the clear Polaroids? Uh, for, yes, for all the divisions, you need Polaroids. And that's something important. Now, uh, for commercial, it could be a little bit more tricky. For example, if you're in LA and you work only as a commercial model, yeah. some of the clients, they want to see you with a little bit of makeup. Yeah. So the Polaroids could be with a little bit of makeup, but again, that's for that specific market and for a specific client. Yeah. That you're going to shoot a beauty campaign or a, a casting that, it, that you have to be with a, li with a little bit of makeup. That's mostly on commercial markets. Like it could be Miami, it could be LA. So it's a little bit different, but always for you to sign with an agency, the best way that we will get back to you really quick mm -hmm. is to send us photos with no makeup and all natural. Yeah, exactly. And most of the agencies have it on their website, like some, some yeah. examples or what you need it. Yeah, even though us, uh, we have it too. We have uh, actually examples in bikini. Bikini is something that we have to talk about right now because mm -hmm. Some of the younger models and their parents, they always ask us like, oh, can I, do I need to send those photos in bikini? Like, I don't think that's, you know, like that's concerning because my, she's such a very young girl. So for most people, they think it's something to don't do it, that they don't have to do it, but we don't have any usage for those photos. The only usage that we have is basically intern, like internal usage for us to see uh, your shape, your body, if we need to be working on, I don't know, working out or toning your body or there are specific parts that have to, you know, that we have to work on. So it's important always to have those bikini polaroids and bikini videos. But know please that the usage that we do have on agencies, at the agencies with those photos, is only for us to see what do we need to work on. Okay, that's really good to know. Yeah. It's really because cool. most of the agencies we use always, always ask for bikini Polaroids. Always. Yeah. And bikini videos. 
Okay, so to make sure they, the best what they can do is just to check with the websites, like, oh, do I need bikini photos or not? Yes, exactly. And for example, some agencies, they do not post any bikini photos on their website. We do. Yeah. We do. Uh, but if they are interested, if the agency is interested, they will get back to you basically saying, oh, we need these bikini photos or we yeah. need these bikini videos. So it's something part of the process. So don't be scared about that. No. This is taking a look backstage. What happens there? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, inside information from the experts. Nice, nice. Yes. Uh, did you see the industry has changed? Oh, it has changed a lot. Has yeah. changed a lot. If you see, for example, before 2010, um, let's go back, for example, all the way back to the 80s. Man, like when you think about Marilyn Monroe, uh, Linda Evangelista, the she's more 90s. We think about that the industry was very close minded in a specific looks, you know, more white people, more white models, more like beauty, beauty, beauty. Right now, after 2010, to, uh, 2010, social media came. And after social media came, it came with the pop culture. So the pop culture and social media got together to bring a completely inclusive, inclusive industry. So now we see models from all over, ages, sizes, uh, looks. So I think right now, from the stage that the, that the industry is at, I think is great. There is more opportunity for absolutely everyone. And that's very positive. It's very positive, not only for people, but also for, uh, for, for those that can reflect or can probably uh, see themselves on a billboard. Or if you are, for example, a customer, you identify with what you see on a magazine or what you see on social media or what you see in a billboard again, you know? So I think it has brought a lot of positive response from the industry and, you know, it's great. So it has been changing a lot. And I don't know exactly after the pandemic, how is it going to turn? That's another uh, challenge that we have now to be more creative on how is this industry going to work? So I'm curious about it. Mm -hmm. Me too, me too. <laughs> it's gonna be challenging. True, true. But I do think it's always good to innovate yourself and change is not bad. That's for sure. I agree with you. I agree with you. And especially, you know, as, as an agency, it would bring more creativity to the models. So if you were at home, what can you do? Yeah. It's just not only your physical beauty. What can you do while you're being at home? Yeah. So be creative. Be, bring something to the table that we haven't seen before. So it helps us in so many ways, uh, thinking wise, to be more innovative. Yeah. And, you know, I love that. Yeah. Challenge accepted. <laughs> yes, that's for sure. True. Um, um, no, yeah, I think, yeah, maybe you have some last advices um, for, for the models uh, who want to start and maybe also for models who, who are already started. Okay, well, um, the first advice for anyone, either if you are a model already or you want to become a model is always be yourself. You know, you will probably hear this from all the agencies. Um, we all want you to be yourself. And why do we want you to be yourself? Because the clients want you to be yourself too. So the clients, whenever you go to a photo shoot, they want to make sure, and especially the agencies, us, we want to make sure that you will be able to talk to the photographer, to talk to the makeup artist, to have a, I don't know, make them laugh, make them have a good time for a 10 hour shoot that you will be at. Mm -hmm. So be yourself, always have great personality. Um, don't take things too seriously. When it comes to obviously be professional, always yeah. be professional, but don't be afraid to be yourself. If you are funny, if you like to laugh, if you like to make jokes, be yourself, you know, but always be professional. That is my best advice for anyone. 
in the industry. Now, the second advice that I can give to those that are starting is if you are a model that you were recently signed with an agency is you have to know the plan, what the plan is, what is the, the plan that the agency have for you. Either if it's a two weeks plan, three months plan, four years plan, you have to know what the plan is. This is always good to be clear since the beginning. You know, agencies, some of the models, they sign contracts and they're just waiting for things to happen mm -hmm. without knowing like what do you sign or what is the next step or stuff like that. And that's why mother agencies are basically commit to tell you all these things, to go through that process. And that's where we should, you know, focus the most whenever you are, for whenever you will be ready. Yeah. And for those that want to start becoming my model, um, I would say, did that pop up on you? I just, yeah, no. I'm oh, sorry, <laughs> I don't know. It was a notification that popped up on my computer. Anyway, and for those- yeah, I, I just had a notification, but then from Instagram. Did you get that? Oh, no, 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 that was, that was my notification. Oh, I okay, 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 technology. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so for those who want to start as a model, my best advice is if you, are, if you have a good presence, presence online, don't get cut off by, by what you see on Instagram. If you see professional photos, if you see a lot of makeup, a lot of things, just be yourself. Do, you know, we want to see natural photos. We want to see funny videos. We want to see all this stuff. No makeup, no filters. We want to see the person that is yeah. behind the phone, you know? So, and also keep pushing, keep pushing hard. Don't be afraid to do it. And one day it will be your day. So don't be afraid to do that. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Well, Riel, thank you so, so much. It was so lovely uh, to talk to you about this industry. And I think you really encouraged a lot of people who were listening and take a good insight. And, That's great. Uh, That's yeah, great. So, yeah. And where can we find you? Where can we find me? Okay. You can find me, well, me or the agency. Let's say both. You can That's find great. the agency. Uh, the website is Caras Model Management, carasmanagement.com. Please remove this. <laughs> Where can we find you? <laughs> you can find us at carasmanagement.com. That is our website. And you can also find us on Instagram at Caras Model Management. We are there for you at any time. Mm -hmm. uh, send a submission, say hi to us if you would like to say hi to us. So. And if you want to say hi to me, I'm at, at Rubiel Taborda. That's my Instagram. Good. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure, Mandy. Thank you so much for having me here. And I hope to see you very soon. Uh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> my God. Uh...